Κύριε Πρόεδρε της Ακαδημίας Αθηνών, κύριε Γενική Γραμματέα, κυρίες και κύριοι συνάδελφοι, κυρίες και κύριοι, καλημέρα σας. Επειδή οι ομιλίες και οι συζητήσεις στην εκδήλωση στο Θερινό Σχολείο θα πραγματοποιηθούν στην Αγγλική Γλώσσα και επειδή είχα ενημερωθεί ότι θα συμμετέχουν και ομιλητές από άλλες χώρες και δεν προβλέπεται ταυτόχρονα διερμηνία, οι εισαγωγικές μου παρατηρήσεις θα είναι στην Αγγλική. So it's a great pleasure for me to welcome all of you to the Biomed AI Summer School, focusing on issues of biomedicine, bioethics, and artificial intelligence. The event has been organized by the Biomedical Research Foundation of the Academy of Athens in cooperation with Uppsala University, the Research Center Athena, and EPLO. And let me extend a special welcome to those of you who have come from abroad in order to participate in the summer school. The subject of this year's summer school is very topical indeed. The issues of biomedicine, bioethics, in the era of big data and artificial intelligence have been at the center of academic research and public debate. Reflecting the extraordinary growth in health sciences, biotechnology, and artificial intelligence. The session in the coming days will explore a variety of topics. And as can be seen from the detailed program that you have, special emphasis is on the mechanisms and the role of artificial intelligence and its contribution to biomedicine and bioethics. In my opening remarks, I would like to highlight certain issues concerning the broad subtopic of the summer school, focusing on AI, and raise a few pertinent questions, which in my view could be usefully addressed in the coming days. The achievements and the benefits of AI are many and well appreciated, but the opportunities for further advances in AI its contributions to various fields and the potential benefits and risks associated with future developments in AI are subject of ongoing and growing debate. As time is limited, I will focus my remarks on two issues, one specific and one general. The first issue is the potential contribution of what we may call artificial brains to the study and better understanding of the functioning of human brains. As many of you know, the remarkable progress in AI over the past decades, in particular over the past few years, is the result of advances in machine learning. Computers, using computer software programs, teach themselves on how to perform complex functions by utilizing large amounts of data instead of being programmed directly by computer scientists. This approach has led to impressive advances in computer vision, language translation, and conversation skills, human-like conversation skills of the so-called jackpots. The self-learning of computers is essentially based on software models called, quote, artificial neural networks, or ANNN, which have been broadly inspired by the networks, by the neurons in the biological brain. Of course, or at least at this stage of development, artificial neural networks are at best a rough sketch of human brains, as they fail to capture the complexity of the human brain. Now, a simple proof of this imperfection surfaced while I was preparing my introductory remarks. My computer was insisting, and not once, but consistently, to write down neutral networks instead of neural networks. Well, Probably my computer's dictionary is behind the times and also not able to learn from experience as I was repeatedly correcting the mistake. 
but there is an alternative explanation. My computer is really smarter and was conveying a message that I did not understand. We should be talking about neutral networks rather than neural networks. I doubt, of course, that this was the case. Now, as some of you know, or many of you know in this room, the original and influential research that studied and compared artificial neural networks with biological brains was carried out at MIT about 10 years ago by Daniel Yamines and his colleagues. They found that the activities inside an electronic network, an ANN, which had been taught to identify certain objects, for example, a dog or a cat from photographs, was similar to what was happening to the brains of monkeys that had been asked to perform the same tasks. And over the past decade, and especially over the previous three years, a number of studies have established further similarities between artificial neural networks that have learned to perform certain human tasks and the functioning of the human brain. These findings are really fascinating and they raise certain questions concerning the use of ANNs for the study of the human brain. So specifically in my mind, the mind of a non-expert in this field, questions that should be further addressed concern the reverse causation of the link between artificial brain and biological brain. As previously noted, artificial brains were initially based or inspired by the networks of neurons in the human brain. And subsequently, several similarities have been established between artificial neural networks and the functioning of the human brains performing the same tasks. So in my mind, pertinent questions include can the artificial brains, the advanced artificial neural networks, be usefully and effectively employed by neuroscientists in the studies of biological brains? And to what extent and in what particular way can the functioning of computer brains can help analyze and predict the performance of the human brain? And if this can be done, it would also help address important ethical issues which are faced by neuroscience in carrying out empirical research. Now, the second issue, which is currently discussed globally, actually discussed this morning in the European Commission, is a more general one and a cause of great concern. Can the artificial intelligence technology pose a potential existential threat to humanity, a grave risk to society, analogous to the risk of pandemics, financial crisis, and a global war. And if there is such a risk, what can be done and what should be done to prevent this from materializing? The Center of AI Safety, a nonprofit organization, released a short open letter recently in May, stating, and I'm quoting, mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. By the end of May, the open letter had been signed by more than 350 executives researchers and engineers in AI. Now, you may think that these are doomers and gloomers. Doomers that predict the end of the world. Well, not quite. Impressively, those who signed the open letter included three top executives of the leading AI companies. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, Dennis Hassabis, Chief Executive of Google DeepMind, and Dario Amodai, Chief Executive of Anthropic. Moreover, two of the three researchers who won a Turing Award for the pioneering studies on neural networks 
and who are considered by some the founding fathers of the modern AI, signed the statement, as well as many other prominent scientists in the field. And two months earlier in March, another open letter signed by researchers and business executives, including Elon Musk, but not the leaders of the IAA firms that I mentioned earlier, called in this case for a six month pause on the development of the largest AI models stating, and I'm quoting, an out of control race to develop and deploy ever more powerful digital minds raises several concerns. So the concerns about the potential dangers of AI relate to the developments of the so-called large language models that could be used, one, to spread misinformation, propaganda, and hatred at a scale that can cause social and political upheaval and could also result in the elimination of millions of jobs. So the pertinent questions that need to be addressed in a substantiated, substantiated and convincing manner include the following. What are the mechanisms and the channels that could lead to grave social and political upheaval, dangerous geopolitical tensions, massive unemployment, and serious economic and financial disruptions? Second, do the potential risks of future advanced AI system require government regulation so as to prevent such risks from materializing without hindering further beneficial advances in the field? Third, are there alternatives or complementary means to manage powerful AI systems so as to mitigate risks without impeding scientific and technological progress. And fourth, what is the likely magnitude of the potential impact on labor markets, the financial system, and the broader economy of what sometimes is called, in quote, artificial general intelligence that can exceed the performance of humans in carrying out a wide variety of tasks. Some initial answers have been suggested to these questions, but much more work is necessary to provide more definite and convincing responses to the serious challenges, social, economic, and ethical, that we may face in the future. I hope that in the sessions of the summer school, you will have the opportunity to explore some of these issues and express some thoughts about the steps that should be taken on the way forward. Let me conclude by thanking you for organizing and participating in this summer school. And I wish you productive and rewarding meetings in the coming days. Thank you.